Okay, let's move on then. We have uh, several uh, presentations and reports uh, to present to the council today. And uh, two of them will be, there are two working groups of council, and we're going to hear from both of them today. Uh, our first speaker is uh, Lisa Parker from the University of uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, Dr. Parker is associate professor in the Department of Human Genetics in the Graduate School of Public Health. She is also the director of the Masters of Arts program in bioethics in the Center of Bioethics and Health Law. Uh, Lisa has been a member of the uh, LC community since the turn of the century, at least um, that's how far back she and I go on a, in the peer review process. She's done innumerable reviews uh, with me for the uh, LC uh, research program. Uh, Lisa is the current chair of the Genomics and Society Working Group of Council, and she's here today to uh, present the annual report of the working group. Lisa? Very good. Thank you for having me and uh, allowing me to report on all that we've been doing in the past year. I would like to begin uh, with a list of our membership and to highlight that we have three new members, uh, Barbara Bernhard, Shanita uh, Hughes-Helbert, and uh, David Vinstra. And uh, as you know, uh, three of the council members are also part of the working group. Um, Shanita, a Amy McGuire, and Artie Rye. Um, the working group's website uh, describes the group's charge, four points. Uh, most of what I'll report on today responds to the first um, charge that's listed there, uh, namely to provide input about the LC research program, the Ethical, Legal, Social Implications Research Program including input about its research priorities, balance between investigator-initiated and program-initiated research, and use of limited uh, budgetary and staff resources. Um, to this end, we uh, reviewed and were very pleased with the LC program's training activities. Uh, in fiscal years 2012 to 14, Approximately 12% of the LC budget uh, was devoted to uh, training and career development uh, activities, supported through a variety of mechanisms, including the Centers for Excellence, the SEERS, um, the Career Development Awards, um, various stage uh, fellowship awards, the Fs, um, and uh, education uh, projects to uh, enhance uh, research infrastructure the f with the, f the Fogarty uh, International Training Program and in, in research ethics and the minority supplements. Um, we are also very pleased that LC program is now participating in the T32 institutional training mechanism and that this fall applications, new applications for new SEERS and for T32s are being reviewed in preparation for uh, the February Council meeting. We also reviewed the success rates of new and early stage investigators seeking uh, LCR01s and we're very pleased with those success rates. We reviewed the research portfolio balance and are pleased with the balance between investigator-initiated and program-initiated research, roughly a 50-50 uh, balance. Um, the LC research program is opportunistic in the most positive sense of that term in taking advantage of opportunities for parallel and embedded research. Um, an example of the parallel research, uh, the an LCRFA uh, released in parallel to a larger uh, initiative would be the H3 Africa uh, LCRFA. You saw uh, H3 Africa presented before. We also discussed embedded LC research, such as CSER and eMERGE, about which you uh, have heard today. And based on this fairly detailed discussion, we were able to articulate this guidance. Uh, that productively embedded LC research should be a true research partnership, that LC investigators should not be involved <coughs> merely to consult on human subjects related issues, and that an LC research component is most appropriate when the research 
in which it's embedded raises novel or important LC issues, when inclusion of LC partners fosters collaborative relationships and builds infrastructure for future research and research relationships, and thus when the inclusion of such a component affords significant benefit. We reviewed the balance uh, between empirical LC research and normative and conceptual research. <laughs> we found that the balance seems to us quite appropriate, and we would like to encourage more applications of both types. Uh, to that end, we drafted our thoughts about the nature and importance of normative and conceptual research, the type of research that is probably most foreign to most of those who are thinking about NIH funding. And a commentary on this topic is an ongoing writing project of the working group. What we thought, as just a, a beginning framework, is to um, explain that normative and conceptual research can be characterized in two ways. Uh, first, by the methods involved, that they're non-empirical methods. Uh, this would be, for example, legal scholarship, philosophical and historical analysis, the methods of the humanities. But that also normative and conceptual research can be characterized by the research questions it addresses. Uh, these are questions that cannot be addressed solely or primarily by analyzing empirical data because the questions are about values and meaning. And some examples of those drawn from the uh, LC uh, research uh, webpage would be, for example, research on the normative factors underlying concepts of risk and benefit, human identity, personhood, health and disease, free will, and responsibility. In relation to the second charge to the working group uh, listed at its website to provide input in light of changes in genomics, genomic medicine, and the policy landscape aiming to identify emerging issues or gaps, we drafted the memo that you, the Council, endorsed last May regarding the importance of conducting and funding rigorous research on ELSI issues associated with the planning and implementation of the Precision Medicine Initiative. Then building on the content of that memo, we've drafted a commentary that's currently under review at Genetics and Medicine. Finally, there are three ongoing projects, additional projects, of the working group that I would like to report. First, to, uh, to encourage uh, submission of applications to the LC Research Program. We wanted to support uh, staff efforts in this regard by ourselves as a working group engaging in outreach to communities of LC investigators, in particular um, communities of potential new investigators. Uh, this would then include making some presentations at the American Society for Bioethics and Humanities meeting in October in Houston uh, this fall but also at other professional meetings and disciplinary meetings um, and uh, publications to help bring the opportunity of applying for LC research support um, through, through professional journals and other disciplines. A second undertaking is the working group has recommended development of website guidance regarding development of LC research proposals. Uh, this would be, uh, as we conceptualize it and as we are very grateful the LC program uh, staff is ex executing it, this would be modeled on the tutorials and samples that are available on the NIAD website and that may include sample proposals, some discussion of aspects of those proposals, and some presentation and discussion of summary statements as well. So this is in process and we're not quite sure what it will look like and precisely what will be uh, included, but the model for it is uh, similar to, or is, the model for it is the NIAID uh, website. Finally, uh, the working group is engaged in discussion 
to examine opportunities for LC research on the implementation of genomics in healthcare. And I know that this is a topic that uh, was raised and discussed a little bit when uh, Pamela Sankar gave her report to Council uh, last year at about this time. Um, so the working group has been discussing this. And uh, what can certainly be said at this stage is that we realize that a wide range of health services research data is relevant to understanding and anticipating and addressing the ethical, legal, social, and policy implications of using genomics to promote health. In our discussions, we have also become increasingly aware of how hard it is to draw a line demarcating health services research. And at the same time, we recognize that the scope and the cost of what is traditionally considered to be health services research could very easily outstrip the current LC research program budget as it's currently funded. Um, this would be traditionally conceived, you know, research that involves um, large data collection efforts and that is therefore of a, a large scale and a large cost. In light of these factors, there are two undertakings that we can report. One is uh, reporting on activities of um, NHGRI staff, uh, staff from the Division of Genomics and Society and from the Division of Genomic Medicine have met and plan to meet regularly, perhaps quarterly or so, uh, to explore health services research opportunities and support in the institute, in NHGRI. And the working group uh, will continue to discuss these issues and explore ways to encourage LC research on the findings of health services research, uh, projects conceptualizing health services issues and analyzing their normative uh, foundations and implications. So we're thinking, we're talking in and around uh, small to intermediate sized projects focused on issues associated with the clinical translation, such as perhaps modeling studies, policy studies, methods development, uh, work that we can encourage and that we think would be valuable and that will not completely overtake the other important issues um, associated with progress in, in genomics. So before I take questions, um, I would like to express the gratitude of the working group to Council for this opportunity and uh, especially to the division, uh, division staff for their support of our efforts and for their work on behalf of the public's interest in LC research and concerns. So thank you and questions. Shanita? So thank you for um, the presentation. That was a really great overview of the work that we're doing. I wondered if you could talk a little bit more about um, the initiatives related to our thought process about precision medicine, given that that's sort of the one of the key sort of interests at NHGRI and NIH overall. So a little bit more about what the working group uh, has been and in some sense will be thinking about. Um, I think we uh, regret that we didn't have uh, the recently uh, promulgated document to respond to, and I think uh, it would be uh, most appropriate. Uh, the thing we can say with certainty is that everyone was feeling um, excited and a little frustrated by not knowing you know, what we might be responding to, uh, working with, and so on. And so I think at the early stage when we met in, um, in April, yes, in April, we thought that uh, trying to support uh, the infrastructure for examining issues as they emerge and as that initiative takes place was in some sense the best that we could do at that time. And so I do think that a responding to the initiative as it takes shape is going to be one of the, the ongoing discussions. And so that's really important because we, um, this council approved, um, and I forget what it, 
our, our sort of perspective about where LC issues and how LC issues should be considered mm -hmm. um, from the perspective of NHGRI, but also um, we sort of, we, I think it was great that we took some initiative to prepare a report that was submitted, it was submitted to JAMA, did we submit it there? The report? The, of, of council or of? The, um, our manuscript that we. From the working from group? From the working group. Okay. Yeah. You, you have dual roles here, so I wasn't sure. Yeah. Um, that is currently under review at Genetics and Medicine. Yeah, and so I, I, I agree with you. I think it was important to, in effect, try to be out. It's hard to be out ahead of something that no one quite knows what it is yet. Um, and But we made the best attempt that we could. Thank you for mentioning that. Other amplifications or questions? All right, thank you. Hold on, Gail. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Please use yeah. your microphone, Gail. I apologize. Yeah, I just was raising my hand. So, but, so thank you, Lisa. That sure. was really interesting. So I have a question about how the working group addresses the difference. I, I think it's really important to think about the boundary between health services uh, research, cost-effective analysis, behavioral economics, all these things which are um, becoming incredibly Im more important as genomic medicine develops and the LC program. I've always thought that the S and LC in included social in the broadest sense, and <clears throat> genomics and society includes economics. Yeah. And so I've always had a war with Jim Evans, who's not here <laughs> to defend himself about that. And I wondered what your um, working group, um, how, you know, what, I mean, you mentioned it a little yeah. bit, and you yeah. said it's some, there's some, differences of opinion, but could you speak a little more, because that is apparently a different area of funding. And um, I'm not trying to introduce <coughs> her for before I'm even officially on, but I'm just really curious about that, because I really do see them as being so incredibly intertwined. Right. I, I think, um, although there probably are some differences of opinion among members of the working group, there are a few things that we agree upon, and one is what you just articulated. And I think that is this point of consensus that these issues are part of the, the S, uh, that health services, that concern for cost, uh, that can uh, interest in the actual you know, behavioral aspect of responding to genomic uh, information and so on, is part of the S. To do um, good, rigorous, valid research um, in the kind of traditional health services model with large numbers uh, that you would need to, to be able to actually draw some valid conclusions from the behaviors or responses that you're studying and so on. Or, uh, we are also, I think, in agreement that the current LC budget cannot uh, support that. And that to do so would, in fact, I mean, to try would probably be, um, maybe it's overstepping to say, you know, unsuccessful. It might be, but I think what we can agree on is that it would overtake everything else, that we still think there are some other important issues to continue to examine uh, in the, the portfolio. So what to do? I think that's one reason that there's, in effect, a call for additional funding. Uh, to do the kind of research associated with implementation, clinical translation of genomics, such as you know, is eventually envisioned by the precision medicine. Um, I think that that's one thing we're talking about, and that's one call that we were making. Uh, and then also to really dig down in the next year and try to identify ways of articulating I'll use the word doable projects that are at a, a sort of, I'm a philosopher, more meta level that don't get in the trenches of large scale data collection, but nevertheless can really contribute foundationally to health services research, um, analysis of costs, analysis of the relevance of behavioral response to the rollout of genomic medicine, uh, and, and try to contribute in that way. 
Party. So, Gail, um, I have not been, I, I hesitate to speak because I have not, unfortunately, had the bandwidth to be very intimately involved with Genomics Society, but I am on the group. And I can tell you that David Veenstra, who is at uh, mm -hmm. University of Washington, right? Yes. Yes. Um, he's a member of the group as well, and that, mm -hmm. this is his area. So, you know, I mean, I, my, my sense is that this is why, in part, he is a member of the group right. to think about what could be done feasibly with respect to cost effectiveness issues in particular. I mean, it's really, and he's part of a, a, the CSER the Caesar consortium mm -hmm. as well, and it just feels like this is ripe for the embedded. Yes. Elsie, yes. um, and, and you know the funding of that is comes from many spots, not just the Elsie program. I understand. So I guess, yeah. um, and I think Gail, that that's one reason that we did feel some confidence and consensus around those criteria for doing embedded research to say this is a real opportunity for these larger scale programs to do the S research or the S the social, the economic, the behavioral in that context, um, but that LC on its own could certainly not do that. Yeah, and, and not just then to be a part of those initiatives uh, you know, as handmaidens to good scientific research, but actually engage in the LC research along with collaborators. Other questions or comments? All right. Lisa, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we're at the lunch hour. <laughs> so um, you, you all know the drill. The new council members follow some of the veterans. One flight up, <laughs> procure your lunch, and please be back at uh, 1 o'clock to resume the open session. Thank you. <laughs>